Hello. Today's video is going to be on implementing a uh, PID with a low-pass filter on the differentiator term only, and it's going to be in incremental mode. So it's going to end up looking like this, where Y is the uh, control output. Uh, this is the current control output that we're trying to calculate. A1 is a coefficient that's multiplied by the previous control output. A2 is a coefficient multiplied by the, pre the output uh, two times before that. And then we have uh, the current error. X is an error. So we have uh, the coefficient times the current error. B1 is the coefficient for the er previous error. And B2 is the coefficient for the error that occurred two increments before. And here I'm just zeroing out some uh, variables, making sure that they're zero so that uh, they don't interfere with what I'm, what I'm trying to do. So this is where I start with the uh, PID in Laplace format. So this is PID with an S operator, that's the Laplace operator. And this is KP, KI, and divide by S integrates. Then normally, if we didn't have the uh, low pass filter, you just have KD times S. S multiplying by S differentiates. But what I've added is this omega over S plus omega, and that's the uh, low pass filter. And the low pass filter should be placed so it's uh, cutting off the noise. In other words, it should be below the noise uh, that you're trying to uh, reduce, but it shouldn't be so low that it interferes with the motion. And usually I use a square root function for that. I'll get into that later. So after I do this substitution, uh, I've done a collection of, uh, by terms so all the uh, output looks organized. You can see that the uh, output is pretty long. Not too bad, really. So this is the coefficient for B0. This is the coefficient for B1. And this is the coefficient for B2. Now, uh, look. MathCAD likes to say z to the second power. If I had my druthers, I would rather have this z to the zero, z to the minus one indicating it's the previous uh, time. And then this would be z to the minus two, saying it's two times before that or two increments before that. And then this is the uh, current output. And uh, you can see that, it, I, again, I would like to reduce the powers of uh, z by two. So let's continue on. I have moved this equation over here, and you can see I've got the, uh, the powers of z for the uh, numerator there so that it doesn't stretch across the page. So what I need to do is get this and change it to this. This is the output, but you see you have all these outputs on the left-hand side now, and these are the inputs, again, the errors. And then what we need to do is we're only interested in the current output on the left-hand side. So I'm shifting over the A1 and A2 terms over and I'm making them negative. And then what I have to do is I've got to make sure that the uh, output here is, uh, uh, the Z term is one, the coefficient is one. So again, I got to divide by a zero, which is the uh, coefficient. You see, that's this coefficient or this coefficient here. So when I do all of that, these are my coefficients. Uh, I got a one, and you see, because I've moved this over to uh, the right hand side, it's a negative divided by a zero, and this is what this coefficient for a one is, and that's the previous output, and that would be this term right here. So I have to take this and divide by by that. OK. So I've done that with all these three or five uh, coefficients. I've got three for the inputs, last inputs, and these are for the two last outputs. So let's uh, find some real values for this and test it out. So what I've done is I've chosen a, uh, a motor control system. It's got an open loop gain of 10 millimeters per second per percent control output. And uh, that means it fastest, I think it should go about uh, one meter per second. I've got a uh, 
corner frequency of 10 hertz, but I have to multiply it by 2 pi to uh, put it in uh, radians per second. Uh, this is just for my information. It's a time constant because you can either do things in calculations of uh, uh, corner frequencies or time constants. So from another worksheet I have, I calculated out the uh, perfect uh, PID gains. And this is assuming that I'm going to place all the poles at, uh, at alpha, which is uh, 10 hertz. This is my update interval. So these are the coefficients that are the resulting coefficients. And I want to make a few comments on that. First thing is that these two terms should add up to about one. If they don't, the system is going to uh, blow up or decrease. So, uh, and this is also, you have to have two coefficients here because there's a low pass filter involved. Then these are the coefficients for the current error, the error before and the error before that. So if you take a look at the derivative term in uh, a normal PID, they always talk about the error zero, E1 and E2. And uh, uh, just to calculate out the, uh, uh, the acceleration, and then you're basically integrating the acceleration to become the velocity because the derivative term is an error that works on uh, errors in velocity. So, oh, also these terms here should add up to about zero. So that's one way to check that your uh, coefficients are in the ballpark. So now we're going to verify by simulation. This is going to be my plant. Again, this K is 10 millimeters per second per percent output. And this is a uh, corner frequency for the, uh, the motor and the load at uh, 10 hertz. This is our PID with the low pass filter. This is from above. And just for your information, this is how you do the uh, closed loop transfer function. So we have uh, the gain of the controller and the gain of the motor. This is, this is the gain of the motor and the load here. And then this is the uh, gain of the, uh, or the transfer function for the uh, uh, controller. And then what I've got to do is I've got to make a, uh, a state space arrays. So again, I'm not going to cover this too much because I have other videos that will do that. But basically, I have to convert the continuous time arrays over to discrete time arrays here. And then I'm going to do a motion that goes 500 millimeters in one second. And there's going to be 1,200 uh, time intervals or 1.2 seconds. So this is my... PID control, my simulation, I have to do two steps of uh, initialization because there's a N minus one and an N minus two. And I basically have to start the simulation at time minus two because the uh, MathCAD does not like negative arrays or negative indexes. So uh, I start with the first two iterations at zero. This TG5 is... Uh, a routine that I wrote, it generates a, a fifth order motion profile. And this is the current time increment for this time period. This is delta T is the one second for the motion, which is from up here. And delta X is how far we're moving. The zero just means that we're getting the first element, which happens to be the position because this TG5 routine returns a position, velocity, and acceleration for, uh, well, target position, velocity, and acceleration. So this is where we get started on the real simulation. And again, this is getting the target position. This is using the control outputs from the previous uh, time increment to update the state. This is the current state, which is a position velocity. And this is um, the input coupling state uh, array, which is, again, from up here. So, oops, scrolled, to, come on, it's scrolling too far. Okay, now, so this is the, the, uh, the, the last output, and then this is the last state. So this is the error. I couldn't use E because E is already used by Euler's constant. So I have the target position minus the actual p position. The actual position is the first element. Got to remember, the, this is uh, position and velocity for n 
time period n. So now I am going to use the equation that we developed up above. And instead of being a y, I use u, because use, use, u is used for control output in uh, control theory. And I have the a1 times the uh, previous times the, the previous uh, control output. Uh, and then this, these are the errors, the previous errors. So the current error, the previous error, and the error before that. And then after I've gone through all uh, 1,200 iterations, I return the uh, targets, the, uh, the state, which is position and velocity, and U, which is the control outputs. So let's see how I did. And you can see that this is a plot of the target and actual position. And it's color coded here. The target position is the red underneath. And the actual position is the uh, blue on top. And uh, you can see that they overlap each other, which means that they're following very close. And I did all this without using uh, feed forwards. So you know that the tuning and the PID is working well. And then if I come down here, I am plotting the, uh, the velocities versus the control output. And since I am going at a speed of 750 millimeters per second here, I should be using about 75% output, which is what you see over here. So that concludes my video.